caste abuse, human feces found in water tank used by quote unquote untouchables. Okay, quick educational moment. For those who do not know, untouchables refers to the community that are now known as Dalits. I only use the word untouchables because a lot of people outside of India do not know the term Dalit. And so if you say untouchable, it communicates the community that you're talking about. But henceforth, I will only be saying Dalit. Okay, because I know it's a kind of pejorative term. Anyways, in a village in the Indian state of Tamil Nadu, a large amount of human excretion was found in a water tank meant for the scheduled caste or Dalit community. An investigation by district authorities found that untouchability was still practiced and deeply rooted in the village. When the children suddenly began to fall ill, the villagers noticed something was wrong. After the doctor suspected the reason behind the issue might be the drinking water source, some men climbed the tank and peeked inside. The fence covering the tank had been opened in the past few days, but the culprit behind this incident was still at large. A villager said that the smell of water was different and large portions of human excretion were found inside the tank, turning the water yellow. Locals of Ira, Ru, Ira, Ur, excuse, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, village, claimed that untouchability is still practiced in the area, the Dalit community is prohibited from entering the temple, and tea stalls have different sets of glasses for the Dalits. While the investigation is ongoing, authorities have set up an alternative water source for the local Dalit community to use. So, yeah, Dia saying, yes, this was really bad. Children were hospitalized. And I covered this story because some of our Atheist Republic community in India sent this to me and they said, hey, can you please talk about this? Because this isn't getting the coverage it deserves in India and we can't really talk about it because of a lot of safety issues. So can can you talk about it? So that's what I love about the Atheist Republic community is like, I can kind of, you know, our team, us in general, we can, you know, be the voice for the people who are like, I can't really talk about this safely. So yeah, Shriyash is bringing up something important, saying bioterrorism. Honestly, this is biological terrorism. Um, So this water tank was set up at some portion of the village, and it was a water tank used that serviced like about 100 members of the local Dalit community. And apparently this water tank was specifically set up because the rest of the village was having, giving the Dalit community a hard time for the water sources that were already available. Which is like, I was thinking about this earlier today. Like, casteism and caste abuse is one of the most dehumanizing extremes that I have ever encountered. Like, dehumanizing someone to the degree that you do not find them worthy of water is like, I do not have words for that. It's crazy. Um, even Hindutva Susanna is saying feces jihad. <laughs> I never thought I would ever hear that phrase. Even Hindutva Susanna is saying feces jihad. We need to cut that out. <laughs> you know, when you shouted, yeah, we need to cut that part out. We need to just like have that as a, we can play that every time. Even. And, and, yeah, yeah exactly. Cut that, clip that. <laughs> For those who do not know, Hindu for Suzanne is a Hindu for troll. Um, and so I guess the only good quote unquote Pot. I'm trying to get a what, silver lining, okay? The silver lining is, is that this instant incident exposed to the district authorities about how bad casteism and untouchability was in this village. Like, the using um, different uh, cups for the Dalits at the Chaiwala. Like, um, banning them from entering the temple, all this stuff. This is all illegal. And so apparently on the reports that I read, the district authorities actually went and like re like reported the, like the, the tea sellers and made a complaint against them, went to the temple. They went to the temple with the Dalit community to, to, to um, confront the person that wasn't letting them enter the temple. Again, illegal. And the woman like appeared, this is how it was written in the, in the article. 
appeared in a trance to the authorities saying that she was possessed by the goddess and as the goddess she wasn't letting the Dalek community in. What the hell? Yeah. So they made a complaint against her. They made a complaint against the temple, blah, blah, blah. In the meantime, you know, they've set up an alternative water source for these people. So it seems like there's action being taken behind this, which is a positive. Thank you. Um, But it just goes to show, like, the, the vitriol. Like, the... I don't, I don't, like, this is a level of bigotry that is, like, so beyond me. When I, he then is saying it's like Jim Crow, but in India and classism instead of racism, it's trash and needs to stop. It's worse than that. In Jim Crow, you had segregated water fountains and one was worse than the other, but it was still potable water. It was still, they were still allowed to have water. I think to get something. The community was fighting to even be allowed to get water. Yeah, I think you need to go a little, if you want to get a comparable version of this in the U.S., you have to go a little bit more back in time than Jim Crow. Yeah, I mean, maybe like, you know, antebellum South, just like racial terrorism, essentially. But, I mean, even then, it's there's so much about it that's like so different. And it's not just classism. I mean, it is hereditary. It is 100% hereditary, but there is like the, you know, Varna and Jati aspect of it. So part of it has to do with occupation. But, um, yeah, it's, it's so, it's, yeah, it, I just, I really don't even have words. Just like the abject cruelty. It's really continues to shock me. It really continues to shock me. Oh, and there was another person, um, Prometheus is saying, I could not even climb that water tank in my village. It was so high and unsafe. They did that all and risked their lives to do it. Oh my God, that's a good point. I didn't even consider that. No. Yeah. Children are like the guy who's doing that, he knows that children are going to be drinking this. Like, how evil do you have to be? And for what reason? Like, you don't understand the, like, the guy who did this. I don't know. Like, what? Do, is there any, are they going to get caught or anything? I don't know. Can There's they, no one that's been arrested so far. Um, can they not do it? Be, in this area, they seem to have a problem with it because a few years ago, a guy got the crap beaten out of him and nearly died because he was a doll, a man wearing sandals. Wait, what's wrong with wearing sandals? It's a castus thing. Wait, you can't even wear sandals as a doll? There's certain roads you can't walk down. There are Dalit men who have gotten lynched because they rode horses in their wedding. That's a castus thing. There's been Dalit men that got murdered because they have a mustache. That's a quote-unquote upper caste thing. Okay, let me correct something. Mariam is saying with the rise of Hindutva, I don't see the caste system leaving anytime soon. Actually, Mariam, this is a, more of a Hinduism thing than a Hindutva thing. Right? Hindutva is anti-caste. This is more just... They're theoretically anti-caste. In reality, they are not at all. Let's be clear. (laughs) I know, but this is like, this is more in line with just core Hinduism rather than this whole Hindutva thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. Especially in South India. Especially in South India. I mean, like, you know, the BJP, they got a lot of press because they um, elected the first tribal woman to the role of president, I believe. So that is very historic. Like, it is an achievement in Indian society, and it was the BJP that pushed that through. So they are anti-caste to the extent that it is um, politically lucrative for them. But there's been a lot of um, good... uh, writing about people who used to be deeply embedded in the RSS and then left because of how much caste discrimination they were facing and um, how it was explicit and it took them a long time to realize that this, you know, what they were preaching is not what they practice and that to feel like their community was actually going to be more liberated, they had to oppose the RSS and the Hindu foot project. Um, Yeah. 
Okay. Some people are disagreeing with my description of Hindu Twitter being anti-caste. Some people are saying Hindu Twitter is casteism. Um, Shreyash is saying to do everything to keep the social, the you know, lower caste communities down. Okay, but I've heard so many different descriptions of this. Okay, um, I've talked to so many Hindu Twitter and then. And I've seen descriptions of them being very, very anti-caste. I think a lot of people also explained to me, and I don't know if this is accurate, okay, is that Hindutva is so focused on Muslims as the enemy that they cannot afford having any other divisions within the Hindu community. So that's why they do not focus that much on casteism or they are... Some of them are, I, and I think you get different experiences based on the Hindu for that you're encountering. A lot of them are very significantly anti-caste, but some people just say that's the, the reason is because they have a message of unity of Hindus versus Muslims. And that's why I they're think so it's it's so-called unity, right? But yeah. what's actually happening is a homogenization. It's actually supposed to be homogenization in practice. They, they preach anti-casteism in practice. It's not the case, except when it's politically convenient for them. Mm. And what they are working towards is a homogenization of Hindu society, because if they have a homogenization, they can purport to be the representative of that monolith. And also it's a trying to homogenize quote unquote hindu society into basically a more northern indian identity and practice of hinduism because the when they talk to people you know from bengal or south india and see the way that they practice their hinduism it's very different and actually objectionable to a lot of people that are north indian there's been huge political rows about this especially when it came to the whole smoking cali thing because they're like, yeah, in, in my culture, like, we feed Kali meat. What are you guys freaking out about? You know, so it's actually very antithetical to the entire history of Hinduism, which has been characterized by nothing except the fact that it is so varied. There's, like, nothing consistent you can say about Hinduism except that it is completely varied. So trying to homogenize it into this, like, category that they can just claim that they represent the best interests of is antithetical to the entire history of like the world's oldest spiritual practice right by the way fun, uh, great book recommendation by hindustani how do you the i don't know how to pronounce that no, i don't know bow bow uh, when i uh, read the annihilation of cast by dr ambedkar yes Baba Saheb. Um, <laughs> wait, Hindus, Hindustani Bao, you should join our Discord because I bet you would suggest a lot of very good cast related news stories to us. And I really like to cover those stories. And we have an entire channel in our Discord recommended to telling us what news to cover on the show. So if you have suggestions, please join our Discord and tell us because I'd be very interested in talking okay. a little more about this. Shreyash was mentioned that he cannot be on our Patreon. He was just doing our newsletter to get our blasphemous art because saying I'm literally a student in my a gap year living with my parents. Yes. Okay, guys, do not support us on Patreon. Um, if you are not, uh, if you can't afford it, please do not, do not support us. Just support us by liking the video and leaving comments and stuff. But this is great, Shreyash, because now you gave us an excuse to tell, uh, to tell everybody that there's a free version of our art as well if you just subscribe to our newsletter, right? So we have an explicit version of our blasphemous art that is available to our patrons only, okay? For you to, you have to support us on Patreon, link in the description to get this but with just uh, $1 a month, right? But there's also a free version Okay, the free version is also very sexy. There's no nudity in it. There's it's not it's not 18 plus. It's safe for work, but it's still very sexy. And you could get that. We we make blasphemous art every week, um, and send it to our newsletter subscribers. And if you want the free version, you can sub be subscribed to our newsletter. Link to that is also in the description, right? The one that says get our blasphemous uh, art book for free. You get the book that has a lot of beautiful art in it, but you also then continue to getting a weekly version of that. Do you have another comment highlighted? Oh, yeah. This is just a very sweet comment. One-Eyed Heathen is saying, just want to thank the hosts of the show for revealing where I'm ignorant. So I have more to learn about the situation in India and the caste system. 
Well, that's mm. so nice for you saying so, one eyed heathen. Thank you for being here. That's why we have this show. That's why Atheist Republic is a nonprofit organization because we do things like for the purpose of education, like supporting atheists, building community, all sorts of stuff. So I'm glad that you got some value out of it. And come back again. I mean, we're not done with this show, but you know, next week. <laughs> We're still not done here, though. <laughs> you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.